This video will show you how to set up a paper correctly using APA style 6th edition. And that includes how to set up your margins, font, the line spacing, a title page, running head, abstract, and how to use section headers to organize your paper. There's a lot to go over, so if you're only interested in one of those things, look at the video description. There will be timestamps in there, so you can use that to just jump to you know information on the running head or whatever it is that you're specifically interested in. And the way that I would use this video is by watching it for a few seconds, pressing the pause button, and then doing the action yourselves, and then continuing on. That way you won't get lost or overwhelmed by all that there is to do and all that we're going to go through here today. And I'd also make sure to practice this a few times afterwards on your own. The more you actually do this, the easier it'll be for you to remember how to do it in the future. So APA style involves being very precise with how you format things. So it's going to be helpful to enable a couple of tools in Microsoft Word to make sure that you're seeing everything and doing everything appropriately. So the first thing I would do is go into the view menu heading up here. And in the show box, there's a ruler button. If you click that, that's going to add rulers to the top and then also to the left. This will help with margins and also with indentation. The next thing I would do is go back into the home screen or the home menu and up over here in the paragraph box there's uh, what's called a pill crow and what this will do when you turn this on is make invisible formatting symbols visible so you can see that when I press that button all of a sudden this little symbol appears here all this means is that's a new line so every time you press the enter key it creates and you're creating new paragraphs there are new lines the symbol is going to appear when you press the spacebar it creates little dots and then when you use the tab button it creates arrows now again the reason why this is useful is because usually these symbols are invisible and if you're trying to make formatting adjustments you may have you know pressed space a couple times and you didn't realize it or you maybe you accidentally hit the tab key and you're wondering why does stuff look this way why can't I change it the way I want to well if you turn on these formatting symbols that might give you the answer why and you don't have to worry about that those symbols being printed out they will not be printed out so if we go into say print preview you can see that symbol does not appear anywhere so it's not going to be printed out at all so you don't have to worry about that so once you've done that, the next thing that I would do is make sure the margins are set up appropriately. APA style margins need to be one inch on all sides. So you can check this by going into layout and then margins, so the very first option. And you want it to be at the normal, which is again one inch on the top left, right, and bottom. So just make sure you have that enabled. Now, by default, some older versions of Microsoft Word and maybe some other word processing programs, they will actually use one and a quarter inch on each side. So, if, And this is what this looks like. This is why we have the ruler on. You can see that there's the one and there's that extra quarter inch that we don't want. So just make sure you're going to margins, making sure it's one inch on all sides. And you can see then the one is almost hidden because it's just one inch. Uh, going back into the home screen, the next thing that you'll want to do is set up your font. APA style recommends Times New Roman size 12. With newer versions of Microsoft Word, that is not the default. Um, so I usually like to highlight the line. Uh, if you go in here, you can look at all your fonts, find Times New Roman. Uh, you could also, handy little shortcut is if you type it in, uh, you can come up with Times New Roman. And then also the recommended font size is 12. So once you've done that, the next thing to do is to set up your paragraph. And again, sometimes with Microsoft Word, there will be an extra space after the paragraph by default. You want to remove that. So that's uh, this little box here, uh, line and paragraph spacing. So you want to remove that space. And you also want to make sure uh, that we're going to move this to double spaced. Um, so we don't want single spacing. We don't want one and a half. We want 2.0 line spacing. Now, every single time you start up a new Word document, it's going to have whatever those default things are. So if you don't want to do this every single time, a handy little shortcut is if you look in the bottom right of the font box, you can see there's a small little uh, window here. And so if you press this, it brings up a whole bunch of options. And this is stuff that we've already done, right? Times New Roman, it's regular, it's, it's size 12. If we want this to be the default, we can just press Set as Default. 
and then it'll ask do you want this to be the default for this document or all documents based on the normal template you would choose the normal template hit OK and so now from this point in time when you start a new Word document Times New Roman size 12 is going to be the default same thing for our line spacing again this box is right here we'd want to make sure all of this stuff is at least for now zeroed out so we have double line spacing uh, and we don't want any space between paragraphs of the same style so we could hit again set as default there all documents based on this template. We can also do that if we go back into the layout menu with margins as well. If we go into page setup, we want to make sure our margins one inch on all sides and again we'd hit set as default. So those are the initial steps for what we want to do to set up a paper in APA style. Once your font and line spacing are set up, the next thing that we want to do is make a title page and the start of this is relatively straightforward. So first we would start by pressing the return key you know, two or three times, it's kind of up to you. We then want to center our text, so use the center button in the paragraph box, and then we type the name of our title. And per APA style, the title should be 12 words or less and concise but descriptive, meaning that you shouldn't have all sorts of unnecessary words, but the title should be reflective of what's in the paper. And then the other thing too, as you notice, I'm using upper and lowercase letters, so all of the major words start with an uppercase letter. Words like of or and, you don't need to, so those can all stay lowercase. On the next line goes your name, and then the line after that is your institutional affiliation. And so this is where the work is being performed. So this is what school you attend um, or what college you're attending. If this is a professional organization, it'd be the name of your organization. And once you've done that, you can press return a couple more times and then move the font back over to the left. And so this is the start of our title page. Relatively simple so far, but the next step will be a little bit trickier. So once we have our title page, the initial text on our title page set up, the next thing that we want to do is make a running head with page numbers. To me, this is the trickiest part of APA style. I'm going to show you one way to do this. I think there's a couple different ways, but the way that I'm going to show you I think is useful with other documents as well. So what we want to do is go to the insert menu up top. And we want to move all the way over then to header and footer, this section here, and press page number top of the page and plane number three. So what this will do is insert a page number in the top right corner of your document in the header. So again, that's insert, header and footer, top of page, plane number three. And you can see it inserts your page number. The next thing that we wanna do is work on our running head. So we started off by typing running head, followed by a colon and then a space, and then followed by a, oops, a short version of your paper's title. And you want that short version of the title to be in all capital letters. So it needs to be set up just like this, running head with the R capitalized, the H lowercase, followed by a colon, space, and then short version of your title in all caps. And the short version of your title should be 50 characters or less, including spaces, which shouldn't be too hard to do. So once we've done this, you want to press the tab key a couple of times, and it should automatically pop your running head over to the left-hand side, which is where we want it. So we want the running head in the upper left-hand corner and the page number in the upper right-hand corner. But this is where things start to get a little tricky. So with APA style, we only want the words running head to appear on the first page. So on every other page, it should just be the short version of the title and your page number. But that's a little tricky to do, right? If we move down to our next page, you can see that automatically it creates uh, the header that's exactly the same as before, just you know, page two instead of page one. And if we go to edit this, right? If we try to delete the running head, well, it deletes it on the second page and also the first page. That's a problem. So, because we just want it to be deleted on the second page. So, what do we do with this? Well, instead of just using the return key or creating a page break to move to the next page, what we actually want to do is make a section break. And so the way that we do this, we go into layout, 
and then under breaks we want to jump down to section breaks and go to next page so again that's layout breaks next page section break and when we type this in what this or when we enter this what this does is creates two sections within our document. So what that means is we can edit this second section separately from the first section. So just as an example, we're not going to leave it this way. If we wanted the second section to be landscape, we can do that. You can see the first page is still in portrait, second page is landscape, but we don't want it like that. We want to keep everything in typical 8.5 by 11 style. So this is the first step. The second step is we want to go into our header and so we can do this just by double clicking and it should automatically bring up the header options. Um, and make sure you're clicking on the header of the second page. The next thing that we do is uncheck link to previous up in the navigation. So this automatically, the header is automatically linked to the first section, but we don't want it to do that. So if we uncheck link to previous, we can now delete the words running head just leaving short version of the title and the page number. And if we scroll up to our first page, hey, look, running head is still there. Everything set up properly on the title page. And now our header is going to be perfectly fine for the rest of the paper. Again, tricky to do. If you didn't know how to do that before, don't feel bad. It's not easy. But once you remember those two little things, next page section break, and then unchecking link to previous, you'll be good for every other paper that you do with APA style. So once you have made your title page and running head, the next thing to do is to start writing your paper. Sometimes you might be asked to have an abstract before the start of the main body of your paper. Not usually, but for longer papers or assignments, you might be required to have one. Fortunately, setting up an abstract is pretty straightforward. So on the top of the second page, we want to center our text, write the word abstract, move on to a new line, and then left align the text. So move the text back to the left, and then from here, summarize your paper in 150 to 250 words. And all you're doing in the abstract is highlighting the major points in your paper. So this isn't a thorough description of everything. You don't have the space for that. You're just trying to prime the reader for what's to come. So highlight the major points that you are going to be writing about in the rest of your paper. Couple things when it comes to formatting the abstract. Notice that the text here is starting all the way to the left. You do not indent with an abstract. You're always going to keep it flush left or all the way aligned to the left. And you're going to keep it double spaced throughout. So, as an example of what it looks like, I'm just going to copy paste words here just to make it uh, easy to show you how this will look. So, it should look something like this. Again, it's double spaced throughout, flush left throughout. And 150 to 250 words, you're not sure how much you've written. If you highlight and you look at the bottom left, it should tell you how many words that there are. So in total, there's 125 words in the document so far. The abstract has 114 words, so I'd have a little bit more to write. Now, once the abstract is finished, you can move on to the next page. And you can do that by pressing return a bunch of times. You could also, if you go into insert and then press page break, it will automatically skip down to the next page. And then once you're on page three, you can start writing your paper. Now, before you can begin actually writing the main text of your paper, you need to repeat the title. So to do this very easily, you can just scroll all the way back up. Uh, you can copy your title, scroll back down, and then paste it back in. So the title should be centered just like on the title page and on its own line. Now, if you are including an abstract, if you have an abstract, this will be on page three. If you do not have an abstract, this will start on page two. And then from here, you can start writing your paper. Uh, you do not need to write introduction or anything like that. It's assumed that the first part of your paper is the introduction. The last thing I'll show you in this video is how to use section headings to organize your paper. And that's the purpose of it, is to organize your paper into different parts that are all centered around some idea. 
And if you use these section headers effectively, it's going to help you as the writer organize your paper, and then it's also going to help the reader to know what's coming in the next section. Now, in APA style, there are five different headings or five different levels of headings. The vast majority of writers won't need to go past level two, so that's all I'm going to show you in this video. If you do need to go past level two, uh, I'd suggest just looking at the Purdue OWL because they do a great job of showing how to set those headings up. So the purpose of a level one heading is to divide your paper into major sections. So if you're writing, let's say you're writing up the results of an experiment, so you have your introduction, so you're setting up why this experiment's important, blah, blah, blah. Um, so let's pretend there's a whole bunch of text here. And let's say then next you're gonna write about the methods that you used to test your hypothesis. Um, what you'll wanna do to set up a level one section heading is center the text, you're going to put it in bold, and then you are going to write the name of your level one heading. And so if this is an experiment, it's probably just going to be method or methodology or something like that. If this is purely a literature review, you might have the next topic that you're going to be discussing as the name of your level one heading. But the, again, the purpose of this is everything on uh, everything that's coming in the next several paragraphs or pages is going to be connected to whatever the name of your level one heading is. So again, this informs the reader what's coming next. And within each section that you create, you will start, again, using paragraph text. So you'll now start writing first section information here. Again, you'll use paragraph format, so you will indent every single, um, you will indent, not uh, every single line, every time you start a new paragraph, you want to indent it. And so that's a level one section heading. Now, with a level two section heading, you can think of this as creating a subsection. And with a subsection, then ultimately, the information still connects to whatever's, uh, whatever your level one heading is, but it's just a little bit more specified now. So a level two heading is going to be flush left. And again, it's also going to be in bold. So I used a couple of keyboard shortcuts there, just used to doing that. And it's going to be on its own line as well. So you'll start writing again on the next line. Again, you're using paragraph formatting here. So you're gonna indent at the start of every new paragraph. A couple important things for level one and level two headings, you're using upper and lowercase letters, as you see here. Uh, the unimportant words like the, of, and, and so on, you can keep those lowercase throughout, but all of the major words should, be, should start with a capital letter. And so again, the idea here is whatever's coming after level two, that's you're focusing your topic a little bit more, uh, should still connect to level one though. And so you can use these throughout your paper. Uh, let's say you're writing a whole bunch and it's time for another major section. Okay, well then you can just write another uh, major heading here and boom, you have a new major section to your paper. So again, it's very useful from an organizational standpoint. And that's it for this video. We covered a lot of things in here. So if you need to hear some of that information again, feel free to skip around. Again, the video description will have timestamps so you can skip to a particular section. Make sure you are practicing this. Again, do this a few times on new documents. The more you do it, the better you'll get at it. And importantly, the faster you'll get at it as well. So that is all I have for you. Thank you very much for watching. I hope that this video was helpful and good luck on your papers.